Matt, what's the mood in the camp? How do you reflect on Tuesday and uh, three points against Cambridge? Yeah, I mean, um, late goals are when it turns into a win um, and clean sheets. It's been a bit of a rarity, um, but we were really pleased on Tuesday. Watching it back, um, and probably what I said after the game, we were so pleased with first half performance um, and should have been ahead in the game. Bar some lapses, defending set pieces, we, we were in control of that game. Um, but then second half, it's always on the knife edge in terms of who's going to make the breakthrough and who's going to create a certain moment in the game. I'm so pleased it was us and so pleased it was so close to the end of the game because I felt we deserved to win that game. Yeah, Peterborough on Saturday, I think the highest score is in, in League One. How do you keep a clean sheet against them? <laughs> well, with difficulty, but we've got to try. Um, but we've also got to take the game. To, you know, that's two games on the bounce where our attacking plays generated opportunities. Um, if we learn how to take penalties, it will ease the pressure a little bit in front of goal, um, but also make the goalkeeper and back line work a little bit more than we did. Um, and if we do that more, then the ball's closer to their goal than it is our own goal. Um, but you rightly alluded to the best attacking team in the league. Um, some fantastic players, some, some pace, um, some power um, and some serious quality there. Um, a team to be admired, but as always, we're at home and we want to force the game a little bit. I mean, in fairness, we saw Man City struggle from the penalty spot last night. Um, have, you, have you discussed penalties? And will it be Chris on duty on Saturday if you get one? It won't well, be Chris. Um, I don't think it'll be Anthony. Um, so your guess is as good as mine in terms of who's next. Um, but we are. We've spoke about it. Um, we'll work on a few bits and pieces. You can never replicate the, the pressure of a game. Um, and, and in Anthony and Chris, you've, you've got players who you, you probably expect to deal with any pressure. So I don't think it's that that aspect going into it too much, maybe execution, maybe a skill set, um, maybe a, a routine they have. Um, I, I honestly don't know, I've not gone into too much detail. Um, luckily, it's not cost us too much in the last couple of games. Obviously, it did do it to a certain extent in terms of Lincoln, but not the, the end scoreline. Um, but it, it certainly can't continue because when you do have moments of attacking play and you, you get a penalty, you hope to get a reward off the back of it. Out of interest, is this something you would let the players ultimately decide? Um, you always get a feel for it. I think Anthony knew that once he'd missed his, his second one, he was going to come off them. Um, and Chris was chomping at the bit at the weekend. Um, so he was ready to take the next one. And then one comes quite early on. So maybe if he'd had more time to think about it at practice, who knows? Um, those psychological aspects of football um, need greater detail and, and more time than we've got at the moment. Yeah, we've got an option for Chris Martin for next year. Um, he said he'd like discussions to be wrapped up sooner rather than later, which is understandable. Just where are we at with Chris and his future at Bristol Rovers? Yeah, discussions, um, pushing pushing in the right direction, um, trying to be clear um, with the board and everyone else in the club with what direction we want to take the team and who we want to keep working with. Um, but he's had such a stellar season um, in terms of just goal scoring, but also uh, value on the pitch. Um, and I said, when was, the, was it the Reading game? about how important it was he was on the pitch to defend set pieces as much as anything else. He's, he's incredible in both boxes, gets there first so many times and how many times he scored that type of goal, the winning goal on Tuesday was his, his type of goal. So long may that continue. Um, we've probably overused him this season um, and certainly in the last, probably since Christmas, we've probably used him too much. Um, and that's no disrespect to him because he's so robust and can keep doing it. But in terms of energy and mind and, and body, everything in terms of that package, he, he's got to sort of see himself more as when he's on the pitch, he's on the pitch for a certain amount of time and really causing the defenders havoc. Um, but he's been so valuable that I've never been able to deload him. Um, I believe this team's a better team with Chris Martin in it. Yeah, and how do um, we expect the next few weeks to map out in terms of futures being confirmed? Obviously, Jed signed his contract. Will it be the traditional retain list at the end of the season and, and take it from there? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a traditional, it's like Christmas, isn't it? Um, you wait till the, the, the last game of the season, then you release it two days later. Um, but in the meantime, there's conversations with players and staff and everyone else involved in the football club um, to see that if they are here, what it looks like, um, what we expect, the standards um, and, and where we want to take the team. Um, so honest conversations leads to accountability and responsibility and hopefully that's a good start for next season. Will we see Grant Ward or James Wilson the next two games? Or do you, like you have some other players, maybe manage them <laughs> yeah. a little bit and be you know, sensible? Yeah, good question. Um, Grant Ward, I don't think we will. Um, but that's not a worry to the fans uh, or anyone else. I think that's more precaution in terms of what happened on his return and then after Fleetwood and then what's happened since uh, on the back of Cheltenham. The scam was as clear or as clean as it possibly could be. So that's great news. But clearly there's just something either 
behind the knee or bottom of the hamstring or in, in Grant himself where we just can't shake that off and if there's a little bit of uncertainty due to whatever reason um, you have to remember what he's been through previously um, there's no point in putting him out there um, without that clean or clarity in his mind going into a game so I don't think we'll see Grant I think there's a good chance we'll see James um, possibly this weekend he's done a little bit today and um, we'll assess him tomorrow. Jack Hunt available this weekend? Yes yes um, yeah he has obviously private matter on, on Tuesday evening and um, he's back in the building today so looking forward to him being available um, and not selection headaches but options um, and a, a, a decision to make on a few positions. And with Grant will the summer be an opportunity to stop this stop start nature of his career you know um, so he can be confident of, you know playing a, a, a set of games? Yeah that, that's always the aim but you, you mentioned the, the stop start nature probably of his career not just our, his time with Bristol Rovers so there's probably an underlying fact is there um, but we've not put him under any under pressure now to save him for pre-season but that's irrelevant if he breaks down again so it'll all be about strength building and um, all about how you know because we've spoke about how dynamic he is as a player how much distance he covers how quickly he covers that and what a difference he is when he's on the pitch and he can never play with anything less than everything and a bit more um, and even when he's absolutely dead on his feet he'll find more to give the incredible physical output so his game is an absolute extreme um, and we don't want him to be an impact player by any means but to just build and build and build I think we've got to get him in the gym and strength base first and then get the fitness side of pre which always takes care of itself and then you are touch wood praying that he does stay fit for, for, for longer periods next season um, and maybe we'll have a, a strong enough squad or competition for places where he's not just first name on the team sheet and plays 96 minutes if he's fit of his you know the amount he puts out data-wise and for everyone's eyes, everyone can see it. So let's try and get the right balance. Um, but as we've spoke about in the past, um, I don't think anyone's got the answers straight away. I don't think anyone in the whole world would have either. Um, I guess with um, Peterborough, the name that stands out is Johnson Clark Harris, who was very nearly a Bristol Rovers player at the start of the season. How do you handle a player who's not had much involvement, but came off the bench and got two goals for them in, on, on Tuesday? Yeah, it, it kind of shows a strength in depth because He's not been overly involved um, for, for a period of time now. Um, but a player of his quality, and then you bring him on and he scores too, he might be involved, he might start this weekend. Obviously, there seems to be a connection from before my time. I think that's it's publicised in terms of what could have happened and, and didn't happen at a, a late stage in the window. Um, does that affect what we do going into the weekend? In all honesty, it doesn't. Um, we speak about every player in the same breath of this is their, their, their dangers, their qualities, um, and they've got a lot, a lot of them this weekend. Um, I don't think it affects the fans or the game in any way. Um, you know, we want them to put their best out there because we want to keep challenging ourselves against some of the best teams in the league, and, and Peter is certainly not. Is he still on the club radar, or has that ship sailed now? It's, it's wrong for me to talk about any player from any other football club. He's contracted elsewhere. Um, I don't like it when managers talk about players from our club who are contracted. It's, it's wrong to do, so I certainly won't be drawn into answering any questions in relation to that. And Peterborough, I mean, they could still be going for automatic promotion, so it's a big game for them, isn't it? Yeah, huge. Um, I think they've got three games left as opposed to our, our two. Um, so still pushing as everyone is. Um, but I want this team, to, our team, to keep pushing as well. Um, and, you know, probably performance against Bolton was, was close to being better and might have got a better reward out of the game. Put in another performance this weekend, our last home game of the season in front of our fans. And hopefully we've got something to shout about. And finally, if I can just change the subject, FA Cup replays are being scrapped from next season. I don't know if you've heard this news. Um, it sounds okay. like yeah. um, they're going to be first round replays, but after that, second round decided on the day. Um, clearly, you've just heard the news. So, no. what's your reaction? I mean, you were at a club, Exeter, who, but for the Liverpools and Manchester United yeah. replays, might not be in Exeter City. I, well, you're right. You're 100% right. Exeter City probably wouldn't be the. the, 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 the Problems they were in at that stage will never be fully publicised. Um, and that first game at Old Trafford and then the replay um, at St James's Park did save the club. Um, it's not too extreme to say that. And it's such a shame for so many low league teams, not only in the professional level, but non-league as well. Um, I just feel we lose the, the beauty of what the FA Cup has always been for such a long period. For the fans, for all clubs, let alone our own, um, would I be saying that if I was at one of the top clubs? I hate to say it, they've got enough finance and strength of squad not to worry about too many games. If you want to take anything away, take away the, the ones which don't matter as much as the FA Cup. The FA Cup's been part of the English football tradition for so long, but we are, as in football, we seem hell-bent on changing it. 
VAR decisions, the format, World Cups in the summer. It, whatever we can do to change it, we, we're trying to change it for, for nothing better for the game, from what I can see and from a fan's perspective, and certainly someone who's working in a game and you can say oh, I'm too traditional, old fashioned. Leave the game the way it is. Let the game run itself. Um, and that, unfortunately for me, involves FA Cup replays. Because next season with the TV deal, we might not have as many three o'clock kickoffs. Um, we saw when you played Norwich, the magic of the FA Cup. Could you get Liverpool? And the magic's still there, isn't it? Yes, it is still there. Um, and we were a second half performance away from, from getting that. And I guarantee this club would have been in a better place going into next season if we'd ever had that. So... You're taking something away from from a lot in the or a lot of teams, a lot of people in the football pyramid and the football world, um, and we do seem to pander to the needs of the the hierarchy of the footballing world. I know their workload and they are overloaded at the top level. I'm not saying they're not, but then take away the, some of the international games for money for the FA and X Y. Well, we could talk at the cows come home in relation to this. I think you've probably got a gist of where, what I think in terms of FA Cup replays. Well, I agree for what it's worth, but thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs>